Hey, thank you for following the First Middle Church of Christ. We're really glad to have you. I hey, thank you for coming into the new year with us and worshiping with us and learning about God. If you're on the social media platforms, be sure to look us up and follow us, as well as our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and pass it along to your family and friends. There's great messages and lessons that can help you grow close and walk with the Lord. All right. Today, I want to do something a little different today. This is an interview with the divine, exploring God's truth. Now, in this hypothetical scenario, imagine a reporter seeking an interview with God. And what questions would he ask? And what truths would be revealed? As we embark on this imaginary quest, let us ground ourselves in the word of God and the teachings of the church. Now, in the book of Job, we witness a profound encounter between Job and God, where Job sought understanding in the midst of suffering. The divine response find in Job chapter 38 through chapter 42 reveals the unfathomable wisdom and sovereignty of God. As we explore the hypothetical interview of God, let us hold on to the, human, the humility and reverence exemplified by Job in the presence of the Almighty. The hypothetical interview begins with the reporter asking, Who are you, God? In the Gospel of John, Jesus declares, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. See, this foundational truth reminds us that God is the source of all truth, the embodiment of love, and the ultimate authority over all creation. As the interview progresses, the reporter inquires, what is, why is there suffering and evil in the world? And this question strikes at the heart of the theological inquiry in human experience. See, in Romans 8, 28, we find assurance that in all things, God works for the good for those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. Through this, we understand that God's redemptive plan is at work, even in the midst of suffering, offering hope and comfort to those who endure. And furthermore, the reporter poses the question, how can we know you, God? In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus instructs us, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. Matthew 7, 7. See, this call to seek God fervently through prayer, study, and fellowship reminds us of the importance of a deep and personal relationship with the divine. As the interview continues, the reporter asks, what is your message for humanity? In 1 Corinthians 13, we are reminded of the, prim of the primacy of love. And now these three things remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. You see, God's message for humanity is rooted in love, calling us to love one another as he has loved us, and to share the transformative power of his grace with his world. God, why is there so much division and conflict among your people, especially within the churches? My child, division and conflict arises from the fallen nature of humanity, driven by pride, selflessness, and a lack of understanding. In 1 Corinthians 1.10, I implore my people to be united in mind and thought, not allowing divisions to create fractions within the body of Christ. Unity is essential for reflecting the love and truth of my kingdom to the world. As my followers, you are called to pursue peace, humility, and reconciliation striving to maintain the bond of peace through the Spirit, Ephesians 4.3. But how do we reconcile the existence of free will with your divine sovereignty? The mystery of free will and divine sovereignty is a profound truth that transcends human understanding. In Romans 9, the Apostle Paul looks into the intricate relationship between my sovereignty and human responsibilities. But my sovereignty does not negate human freedom, but rather operates in concert with it, working all things according to my purpose for those who love me. Embracing this tension requires humility, trust, and deep reverence for my wisdom and love. Through prayer and the guidance of my spirit, you can navigate this tension with faith and obedience. But what is the significance of the church in your divine plan? The church holds a sacred place in my divine plan as a body of believers called to carry out my mission on earth. In Matthew 16, 18, Jesus declared that I will build my church 
and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. The church is called to be a beacon of light, a community of love and grace, and a witness to the transformative power of the gospel, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. The church is called to be a living expression of my love, truth, and redemption to a broken world, sharing the hope found in Christ alone. How can we, as your followers, live out our faith in a world filled with doubt and skepticism? You see, living out your faith in a world filled with doubt and skepticism requires unwavering trust, boldness, and a deep understanding of my word. In 1 Peter 3.15, you are called to always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. This entails a life of integrity, humility, and compassion, reflecting the love and truth of Christ in all your interactions. Embrace the power of love. Embrace the power of prayer, the study of scripture, and a fellowship of believers to strengthen your faith and bear witness to my transformative work in your life. But remember, I am with you always, empowering you to be a light in the darkness. God, how do we understand the concept of suffering in light of your love and sovereignty? Suffering is a profound and complex aspect of the human experience. But in the midst of it, my love and sovereignty remain steadfast. In Romans 8:18, 8, the Apostle Paul writes, I consider that our present suffering are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Suffering through painful can ultimately lead to spiritual growth, perseverance, and a deeper reliance on my grace. It is through suffering that the depths of my love and the, and the promise of redemption are often most profoundly revealed. My sovereignty assures that even in the midst of suffering, that I am working all things for the ultimate good of those who love me and are called according to my purpose. But how do we understand the doctrine of salvation and the roles of grace in our lives? The doctrine of salvation is at the core of my redemptive plan for humanity. In Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9, the Apostle Paul writes, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that anyone can boast. Salvation is a gift of grace, freely offered to all who believe in my Son, Jesus Christ. It is through faith in Christ's atoning sacrifice that humanity is reconciled to me. And through this grace, you are called to work in obedience and love, bearing witness to the transformative power of my gospel. Embrace the gift of salvation with humility and gratitude, reflecting my grace in your interactions with others. What is the nature of prayer and its significance in our relationship with you? You see, prayer is a sacred communion between you and me. It is a means through which you express your heart, seek guidance, and align your will with mine. In Philippians 4, 6, and 7, the Apostle Paul instructs us, says, do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. It is through prayer you open your heart to me, seeking my will and guidance. It is a powerful means of experiencing my peace and grace in the midst of life's challenges. Approach prayer with faith, persistence, and a heart of gratitude, knowing that I can hear and respond according to my perfect will. But how can we understand the concept of eternity and the hope it offers in the face of temporal challenges? You see, eternity stands as a beacon of hope and a promise for all my followers, offering perspective and encouragement in the face of temporal challenges. In 2 Corinthians 4, 17 and 18, the Apostle Paul again reminds you, for our light and monetary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweigh them all. So we fix our eyes not only what we, what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, and what is unseen is eternal. The concept of eternity underscores the transient nature of earthly trials, and it points to the enduring hope found in the promise of eternal life with me. Embrace this hope with steadfast faith, knowing that the challenges of this world are temporary, but the glory of eternity is eternal. 
And let this hope inspire you to preserve with courage, faith, and unwavering trust in my promises. God, what is the significance of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer in the church? The Holy Spirit holds profound significance as a divine presence that dwells within believers in the powers of the church. In John 14, 16, and 17, Jesus promises, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because he has either seen him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be with you. The Holy Spirit serves as a comforter, counselor, and guide, leading believers into truth, empowering them for service, and uniting the body of Christ in love and fellowship. Embrace the presence of the Holy Spirit with humility and openness, allowing his transformative work to shape your life in the life of the church. God, you know, in the face of uncertainty and doubt, how can we find true peace and assurance in you? True peace and assurance are found in a deep and unwavering trust in me and my promises. In Isaiah 26, 3, it is written that you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. The key to finding peace and assurance in the midst of uncertainty and doubt lies in fixing your gaze upon me, the unchanging and faithful God. Embrace the assurance found in my word, the comfort of prayer and the fellowship of believers. Trust in my sovereignty, wisdom, and love, knowing that I am the anchor of your soul in every season of life. But God, how can we navigate the complexities of living out our faith in a world that often opposes your truth? Living out your faith in a world that opposes my truth requires courage, discernment, and unwavering conviction. In John 16, Jesus assures you, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Embrace the call to be salt and light in a world that desperately needs the transformative power of my gospel. Walk in love, humility, and grace, speaking the truth in love, and standing firm in the face of opposition. Remember that the victory has already been won through the sacrifice of my son, Jesus Christ. And let this truth embody you to live out your faith with courage and conviction. As we conclude this hypothetical interview with God, May the deep theological responses offered serve to deepen our understanding of faith and inspire us to live with unwavering trust in the divine wisdom and love. Let us carry these truths with humility and grace as we continue our journey of faith. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. May we go forth with the courage to embrace the deep theological truths that we have employed today. Thank you for joining in this exploration of faith and theology. Go in peace, and may you continue to seek wisdom and understanding in your spiritual journey.